Hey y'all, this is Val from Our Forever Farm. I'm very excited today. We're making a 12 layer chocolate cake. It's Mother's Day weekend and I thought I'd get one more thing in the freezer. So me and Sweet Hunter will enjoy it today and then we'll slice it up like you saw in other videos where I slice it up on the little plates and put it in the freezer. And then when company comes, we can just pull out whatever they want. So far, I've got caramel cake in the freezer. I've got Japanese fruit pie. I've got chocolate pie. And now I have chocolate cake. Let's get to cooking. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you this. If you, if you were to sell this cake, this cake would be a very expensive cake to sell because there is a lot of detailed, um, there's details in doing 12 layers. That's a lot. The easiest thing for me is these disposable pans. And I do them three at a time, three layers at a time in my oven. But that way, if I don't want to wash these, I can just throw them away. Yes, I know. Each package has three in it. They're about a dollar a piece. To me, it's worth not standing washing them over and over or storing them. It's just easier, more convenient. But if you want to wash pans, you can do it. Like if I use my cake pans, I think I only have three. So every time I did three layers, I would have to wash the pans. Then do three layers again. Then do wash, then do three layers again. This is just the easiest for me, y'all. Dollar a piece for each layer. I'll throw them away, you know, or I'll save them. Sweet Anna said, how much does this cost a piece? I said about a dollar a piece. He was like, oh my goodness. I said, you wanna wash cake pans? <laughs> that did it for him. <laughs> but to be quite honest, you can wash these and save them if you want to. And you'll always have 12 pans to make 12 layers. This is a wonderful, wonderful cake. Now I'm pretty tight. Y'all know that. I don't spend a lot of money on a bunch of junk. But I washed these once to use as cake pans and I'll probably throw them away. So I've got my mixer out. I've got all my ingredients. I don't have them measured out, but I like to call them out before where if you want to follow along, you can go ahead and get your ingredients out. Here we go on the ingredients. We're going to use all purpose flour. That's plain flour. We're going to use baking powder. We're going to use salt. We're going to use sugar. We're going to use unsalted butter. If you do use salted butter, if that's all you have, and most of the time I do use salted butter, leave out the salt if you use the salted butter. This time I'm using unsalted butter and get it to room temperature. Next, we're using eggs. We're gonna use six eggs and they need to be room temperature also. We're gonna use milk. We're gonna use vanilla flavoring and that's all for the batter. So let's get busy. I got my mixer going. I got to spray my pans. I'm going to preheat my oven. Oh, preheat your oven to 375. I've got my sifter here. We're going to add four and a half cups of all-purpose flour into the sifter. I did half at a time, sifted it, and then added the rest. That last half a cup, I'm just eyeballing it. And here I'm just sifting the last two and a half cups. So before you get to the end of the flour, you want to add in one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. That's one and a half teaspoons of baking powder into your sifter. And next we add one quarter teaspoon of salt into the sifter. Now we sift those in. Now, after doing that, we're gonna sift all this together one more time in a separate bowl. I love my old timey sifter. I've got one of those fancy screen little basket things that you shake and I've tried it several times. It just doesn't work for me like this. I mean, you can't perfect perfection, right? We're just gonna set this aside. 
Now we're gonna use our one and a half cups of butter, which is three sticks of unsalted butter. And mine is really soft because I've had it sitting out where it'll be room temperature. We're gonna add two and a half cups, two and a half cups of sugar, white sugar. This is a half cup measurement. So that's one. two and a half. And I'm gonna beat the sugar and the butter together. So I'm gonna start this on low and gradually speed it up. Now we're gonna let this beat about three minutes, stopping it periodically to scrape the sides. Now we're gonna add six eggs, one at a time, mixing well and scraping down the sides. I remind you all the time that we need to learn to cook from scratch. We need to know how to cook homemade from basic ingredients that we should have in our kitchen. Now I'm showing you how to make this 12 layer cake, but you can use this same batter and make a basic cake. Everybody needs to know how to make a homemade cake. Now it's time to add our flour mixture in. We're gonna alternate this by adding our milk, three cups of milk, a little at a time. Start this on low. Then we'll speed it up to mix it well, always scraping down the sides. And you just continue to alternate your flour and your milk Mixing well, scraping down the sides until you get it all incorporated in. So now we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. So you just saw me empty this, but don't worry, I've got this. Now, I made this for uh, my kids at Christmas. It didn't quite get dark as I wanted, so I ordered some more vanilla beans, added them to it, and it looks great. So they'll get there. It took, well, let's see, I did it before Christmas. It's probably took six months to do this. Yeah, six, seven months. The longer you keep it, the better. And if you haven't saw that video on making vanilla extract, uh, I'll link it in the description box below. I gotta fill this up. I'm baking three pans at a time. You want them to be at least two inches apart. You're gonna put a scant cup of this batter in each pan. A scant means, I guess, not hardly, I guess. Now you can butter and flour your pans or you can spray them like I am. Make sure your oven is preheating to 375. Now this is a one cup measuring cup. I'm just dipping it in. I'm not making sure it's level because it said a scant one cup measure. You can take your spatula and just kind of spread it around or you can just swirl the pan around. But what we're looking for is a very thin layer. So now I'm going to put these in the oven, making sure they're at least two inches apart. And we're starting now. Now every oven's different. Mine takes about 12 minutes to get these to where when you touch them, they're firm. It's not going to take long, so watch them close. Start watching them about nine minutes. Like I say, every oven's different. And we're going to do 12 layers. So while that's cooking, I'm going to wash up the dishes I did have to use. So this is what they look like, and these are cooling in the pans for five minutes. Very, very thin. Now I'm going to put three more in the oven. And you just continue this process until you get 12 layers.
Now these have been cooling for five minutes. I'm just gonna flip them out of the pan. And that happens to everybody, y'all. It'll be all right. Put this puzzle together. Nobody will ever know it, I promise. When things like that happen, it's a great time to taste your cake and see how it is. I've already done it, it's really good. Really, really good. Good batter, good cake. So while my second batch of cake layers are, are uh, cooking and they're about done, we're gonna start our icing. So we're gonna use one cup of butter and that's softened butter. If you don't soften it, it's okay. You're gonna boil this anyway. But I did have mine softened. Just makes it easier. So one cup, each stick is a half a cup. Turn my eye on low. I'm gonna melt the butter. In the meantime, I'm going to get my other ingredients. So I'm adding three cups of sugar. This is a half cup measurement. That's one cup. Two cups. This is at the bottom of the barrel, so I'm gonna try to get this half cup here. Two and a half cups. Don't think we have enough in there. Let me get another jar. Here we've got a whole nother jar. I do keep my sugar in jars, airtight containers for storing. Throw an oxygen absorber in there if it's gonna be any length of time. That's three cups, by the way. This calls for half a cup of cocoa. This is actually a three quarter cup measuring cup. I can't find a half cup. So I'm just gonna kind of guess this. I'm gonna add it in. The butter's melting, the sugar's sitting there. So we're gonna add a full can of evaporated milk. I have washed the lid. Always wash the lids of all your canned goods. I said that one day on YouTube and I had a lot of people question me on that. But if you go talk to a grocery store person, you will find out quickly why you do that. Now I'm gonna stir this up and bring it to a boil. We're making the icing, the frosting for this cake. Whoa, and I just messed up my stove big time. I'm gonna change to a whisk. Get those clumps of cocoa out. You can sift your cocoa if you want to. I usually don't. We're gonna bring this to a boil. So my timer's going off. Google stop timer. And I'm just gonna get these out one at a time. I'm gonna set them on the edge of this and let them cool in the pan for five minutes. My oven has hot spots, so yours like this is brown around the edges, so I know it's done, but it doesn't get it doesn't get brown there. Where this one got brown, but I'm telling you, it won't matter. So there's three more out to cool. I'm going to finish this icing. <clears throat> Every time I do things like that, when I got my hands in that, I got my hands over here spraying pans, putting batter in, I'm making icing all at the same time. I've got cake in the oven. I think of that quote, I can't remember and I can't find it again, but it says being in the kitchen, cooking is like an orchestra playing. It really is. This is a fun cake to make and it's different. 
and that's what I like about it. And to be honest, those thin layers with that chocolate dripping on it is absolutely delicious. And it's even better cold. I remember watching Sweet Hunter's Granny make a cake or several cakes, especially at the holidays, and she would take her cakes to the living room. They always kept that living room closed off so it didn't have any heat, so it was cold room, so it kept the cakes so fresh. So our goal here is to boil our frosting until it looks like a thick chocolate syrup. Our goal is not to have a spreadable frosting, but a pourable frosting and it will thicken up as it cools down. So I've got my icing on low. It's still boiling a little bit. I'm gonna try to get these out of the pan. I think what I'm gonna do, they're still a little warm, is take a knife and just kind of push the edges up. I think that'll help. And I may let it cool just a minute more. Seems to be coming out really good though. But I want the middle part to come out good too. But don't worry if you had a mistake like I did. It's gonna be in the middle and you'll probably have enough batter to make another one if you want to. I probably won't. All right, I've turned my eye off and I want to show you what this looks like. So you can see it looks like a thick, not real thick, but a chocolate syrup. That's where you want it right there. Pour just a little vanilla in here. I gotta fill it up all the way. But this calls for one teaspoon in your icing, in your frosting, of vanilla flavoring as it cools. We're just gonna stir this up. I did the first one and it came out perfectly. Let's move this one back. See what this one does. Perfect. Almost perfect. They look fine. So we've got six done. So we've turned our icing off. I've got cakes in the oven, more layers of cake. I got six done. One's a hodgepodge one, but it's okay, it won't matter. And icing's cooling. And let's see, I'm gonna get some more pan sprayed and ready for more cake to go in the oven. So what the directions say to do is to get a cookie sheet, a jelly roll pan, put under these, pour the icing over them, uh, let them drip. That would be great in a real world that had everything perfect. But I don't do that way. So if you can, that's great. I'm gonna take this tore up piece of cake and put it on the very bottom. It is not gonna hurt a thing, not a thing. It's like put, putting a puzzle together wrong, right? I'm real good at that. So that's all I'm doing right there. And I'm gonna pour some icing over this. I almost forgot to turn the video on. So all I'm doing is just drizzling a little bit of icing over this cake layer. And my other cakes are ready. Pray I can do this really quick before I have to get them out because I have no more racks. So all you're doing is putting the second layer on and doing the same thing. And we're going to repeat this process until we get 12 layers. Y'all, this is my first Mother's Day without my mother. This is our ninth Mother's Day without Sweet Hunter's mom. And I know there's many others out there that are missing their moms. We just want to say that we're praying for y'all. Y'all pray for us. We can all get through this together. We have to keep on going for them. And we're so thankful that we have that hope that we will see them again. The cooler they are, the less they're easy to break. And I'm telling y'all, if they do break, it's okay. Put it in the middle. Put it on the bottom. Nobody will ever know it. This cake is delicious. All we're doing is just putting icing between each layer. It's going to drizzle down the sides.
and you can even just swirl these around. It's gonna spread out anyway. I'm gonna put these in the oven. We're on nine. Now, don't worry about your cake plate. You can clean that up where it, it makes a well of chocolate down on the bottom. That's why they say to use a jelly roll pan underneath the racks. And I'm sure that'd be much better, but I don't have one, and this is just the way I've always done this cake. Not bad. I wasted some of this good cake <laughs> batter. I got it on me, on my shirt. He knows I'm baking a cake. He just don't know which I'm one. You, this is the real deal right here. You just can't beat this good old batter. Homemade batter. Mm -hmm. Not cake mix. Mm -hmm. It really does make a difference, yeah. doesn't it? The real deal. Happy Mother's Day, y'all. 12 layer chocolate cake. Wow, what you got there? One of your favorite chocolate no, cakes. not one. That is the favorite. Oh, right is there. it? I thought it was your second favorite. No. It is delicious, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Where's my plate? The best. Bud Johnson. Can't beat it. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Go cook something. <laughs>